Hi, welcome to 7 Facts, the channel where you get to watch a video about every single country on earth. In today's video, we're going to talk about the last of the British territories, the Turks and Caicos Islands. Remember that there's a playlist containing all the British territories, so be sure to check that out too. Please remember to subscribe if you wish to see the two new videos I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. The Turks and Caicos Islands are a group of tropical islands in the Atlantic, just north of the Caribbean Sea. They are a British overseas territory, meaning that they are autonomous, but are under the sovereignty of the United Kingdom, with Queen Elizabeth II as the head of state. It consists of 8 main islands and more than 299 smaller ones, having a total area of 616 square kilometers. If you're having a hard time locating them, don't worry, you're not alone. The string of islands is barely visible on a world map, but if you look northeast of Cuba or just east of the Bahamas, that's where you'll spot them. The islands have a complicated history. The first inhabitants were the Taino natives, who later developed into the Lucayan people. But once the Europeans arrived, the islands changed hands several times. First, the Spanish captured the place in 1512 and enslaved the locals to replace the largely depleted native population of Hispaniola. Because of this, in just one year, the Turks and Caicos Islands were completely depopulated and remained so until the 17th century. During this time and all the way to the 18th century, the islands passed from Spanish to French, then British control. Once slavery was abolished by Britain, many illegal ships were intercepted in the area and the freed African prisoners settled in the islands. Today's population is largely descended from those people. There are two stories as to how the islands got their name. The most accepted version is that Turks is derived from the indigenous Turks cap cactus, a small stubby cactus capped with a spiny structure resembling a Turkish fez hat, while the Lucayan term Kayaiko, meaning string of islands, explains the Caicos part. In the other less accepted but more exciting version, Islamic corsairs or ship raiders in the Mediterranean were often referred to as Turks, and the term became a synonym with pirate. Early mapmakers combined this with a version of the Lucayan word Kayoiko. So in other words, they were warning that the Turks and Caicos were islands with pirates, which they were for several decades around the turn of the 18th century. I don't know about you, but I kinda prefer the second version. What do you do when you're thirsty? You drink water. What if you wanna take a bath? You turn on the taps and bathe in fresh, clean, sparkly water. But where does all that water come from? Why, it comes from the lakes and rivers that surround your home. But what do you do if there are no lakes, no rivers, no streams, not one source of fresh water around you? Well, you might start collecting rainwater. It doesn't sound ideal, but that's just what's going on in the Turks and Caicos. The islands have very limited natural freshwater resources, so the locals use private cisterns to collect rainwater. This isn't very easy, because the islands receive on average 350 days of sunshine every year. Yet somehow, the people here managed to survive for centuries. The Turks and Caicos Islands almost joined Canada. Five times! In 1917, the Canadian Prime Minister Robert Borden suggested that the Turks and Caicos join Canada but this suggestion was rejected by British Prime Minister David Lloyd George, so the islands remained a dependency of Jamaica. In 1974, the Canadian MP Max Saltzman tried to introduce a law to annex the islands to Canada, but the law didn't pass in the Canadian House of Commons. In 2004, Nova Scotia's parliament unanimously invited the islands to become part of the province. 
The latest proposals came in 2014 and again in 2016, but the idea was again shut down. For the Turks and Caicos to join Canada as its 11th province, a lot of things have to happen. First, the Queen would have to be willing to transfer one of her assets to Canada. Then, Canada's constitution would have to be amended and there has to be a unanimous consent of all the provinces if the islands would have a representation in the House of Commons. Healthcare, social security, national depth and regional security would also pass into Canada's care, so gathering support for such a move is difficult to say the least. Not to mention the fact that the actual people who live there would have to give their okay in a referendum. The capital city of the territory is Cockburn Town. Located on Grand Turk Island, Cockburn Town was the first permanent settlement in the territory, having been founded in 1681 by salt collectors. The city supposedly lies on the place where Juan Ponce de Leon, the first European to sight the place, first landed on the island. Historic 18th and 19th century Bermudian architecture lined the streets, and the town is known for its long narrow streets and old street lamps. Only 3,700 people live here, a number that pales in comparison with the territory's largest city, Providenciales. Almost 24,000 people, or 75% of the total population, live in Providenciales. Today, Provo, as it's known locally, is a booming tourist destination, but up until 1964, that wasn't the case. The city had not a single wheeled vehicle, no roads, no water, telephone or even electricity. Nowadays though, it has become a luxurious resort, full of tourists all year round. Though the islands of Turks and Caicos are small and can barely be seen on a map, the coastlines are known to span up to 350 kilometers. That's 360 kilometers of white sandy beaches and crystal clear azure waters. With a warm climate, lying around the beach all day does sound like the most ideal vacation. Average temperatures lie around 27 to 31 degrees Celsius all year round. Water temperatures are said to be as warm as a bathtub, so how can you say no to that? With all this in mind, it's not surprising then that more than 1 million people visit the islands every year, with at least one cruise ship arriving almost every day of the year. And there you have it. These were 7 facts about the Turks and Caicos Islands. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Share your thoughts downstairs in the comment section and afterwards check me out on Facebook and Twitter. A good way to offer more support to this channel is through Patreon, the link is in the description. I hope to see you next time, bye.